Welcome back, everybody, to Open Line. I'm Rory Johnston, and our guest tonight is the new executive director at the Fairgrounds in Nashville. Her name is Laura Schlesser, and she is here. We stole her from the city of beautiful city of Milwaukee, by the way. Uh, nice lake up there, north mm -hmm. of Chicago, uh, and uh, a lot of great breweries up there. But she's in Nashville now, and we got a lot of great things going on with the Fairgrounds Nashville. Just, just to talk a little bit about the history, and we were talking about the nostalgia. So many of you I know have great stories about the Fairgrounds. It opened in 1891, folks. It's 125 years old, and the first Tennessee State Fair, which just wrapped up uh, this past week, Sunday, Sunday mm -hmm. uh, was held on the property in 1906. Uh, so there's just a lot of great history there. Your first weekend here, tell me a little bit about that. I mean, oh. you're here only a month now. Yes, um, we moved here to, on the third, and on the week, that first weekend, we had the pleasure of attending a um, an, a race at the fairgrounds uh, that was backpack day so mayor barry was there and we got to give out you know school supplies and backpacks right. to get the kids ready for school so i got to see um a race although it was cut, cut a little short by the rain but um jurassic quest which was really fun dinosaurs and there was a ton of families and i saw wrestling all in the same day literally within you know a half an hour i got yeah. to see a, a very diverse offering of events and I th I guess that's kind of who we are and what we do you know we have a lot of events that we offer and they're so unique and different have there been um, community surveys as far as the fairgrounds I know you're, you're still new to the job if not do you think it's important I mean when you say the fairgrounds Nashville to a typical Nashvilleian the first thing that they say is it um, the fair is it racing? Is it flea market? Mm -hmm. um, or all of the above? Yeah. You know, I, um, I know that there have been a lot of studies associated mm -hmm. with the fairgrounds. And one of the things that we're going to be working on coming up is, is strategic planning. And, and I'm sure we're kind of going to get into that discussion. And that's yeah. what our Forward 5 effort is. But yes, absolutely. Public input through the, you know, a variety of ways, whether it be a survey or public meetings, incredibly important to the process. Yeah. So. All right. Also, uh, we're talking about input. We've got some callers on the line. We appreciate that. Let's go to Jay first. Jay, thanks for holding. Good evening. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you to Nashville. I hope everything goes well. Thank um, you. I was just wondering. I know you know racing is sort of you know it, it's it's sort of die, to me it's sort of not as popular as it used to be. And right. I remember as a kid growing up, and I, I met Richard Petty at the fairgrounds. I always you know I always have that memory. But do you have a lot of people complaining about the noise? and of the fairground of you know of the races and i'll hang up and listen thank you thank you yeah that's been uh, an issue that we've covered here on news channel over on the main channel news channel five for uh, a number of years some of the residents in the area and i know that there was there were some experts looking into that um, yeah, my understanding um, is that you know we again we want to be good neighbors, yeah. and, and we've taken some steps in our in some our contract. Noise reduction. We have we've right. definitely taken some steps in partnership with our promoter um, to to decrease that noise level in consideration of our surrounding communities. So, you know, I think we we meet with the neighborhood on a monthly basis. We actually have a meeting again coming up this week to talk about those issues. It's an open communication and. And that's really helpful. So we are, are you know, we're very considerate uh, of our neighbors through that, mm -hmm. um, and and we will continue to discuss that with them as as we move forward. And, and you bring up a good point, Laura, about uh, talking, working with the promoter. There are promoters and vendors, and a lot of outside, kind of contractual, private entities that are working with the fairgrounds Nashville. A lot of them. Um, and so that's important to have those relationships, w good relationships with them and working with them to kind of keep uh, 
the, the business coming in, right? Absolutely. We have a couple groups of customers. You know, we've got our promoters and our event organizers right. that we actually contract with, but we have the public too in our in our community who comes in and takes advantage and enjoys those events. And they're our customers too. So yeah. even though it's on a different level, um, we want to work with them equally so that everyone enjoys the experience that that we provide. Yeah, we might be the landlord. In, in the host, uh, property host for those, but we are invested in, in our partnership's success. Sure. Let's go uh, back to the lines and welcome Jody. Hi, Jody. Hi. Go ahead. What's on your mind? Yeah, well, I've lived in Nashville most of my life, yeah. and uh, uh, Fairgrounds Grounds is a part of my life, and, and I know the contractors are chomping at the bits to get their hands on oh, yeah. that property, but I know at some point, there's going to be something that happens. The racetrack is not, it, it's just not feasible. So we have an 8-track on that, out at 840, and everybody knows that. It's shut down, but I would like to see something built out there like the Parthenon. You know, it, the craft that they've built on the riverbank that looks like a roller coaster or the gay fair. ferries that are telephone poses that are out on 8th Avenue is crap, and I think we can do better than that. So you're talking about... I think about... National deserves better than that. And I think there's a lot of things that we can do at the fairgrounds. Uh, I would like to even see horse racing back on that track, because okay. we know that NASCAR is left, and, and there's going to be things that happen there. And it, it's just a matter of time. There's right. too much money, and there's too many people involved in this. You, uh, you mentioned some of the arts and culture is what you're talking about. Yes. Right. Get a little more of that. And, and if you look at the money that was spent on some of that and the people that are here from Nashville of what they think about that, you know, it, it's ridiculous. You know, you go out to the parking lot, you want to see something, you go out to that park and you walk around, you will see something there. Yeah. All right, Jody. Good, good points. We appreciate it. Um, what do you think about his, his concern about the future of racing, for one, there? You know, I think it remains to be seen. We're right at the, you know, I like to say we're at a, a threshold of a transformative mm -hmm. time out there. Um, with this improvement plan that we are just in the very, very early stages of, um, you know, so much so we don't really have many details on what, where that's going to go right. and how th the fairgrounds are going to look other than what our basic needs are. Um, you know, our desire, one of the things that Jody said was uh, essentially diversity of events, you know, that, mm -hmm. and that is our strength, I feel, is that that property is very versatile, it has a ton of potential, and we can support a lot of different events, whether it be active recreation or, or, or shows or, you know, arts and culture, as he brought up, mm -hmm. so... Okay. Uh, I tell you what, uh, about five minutes for another break. Is that right, Courtney? Because I want to start the discussion uh, as far as the strategic plan goes. Mm. We've, got a, we've got a few more minutes and we've got another call. Holder, uh, a caller, uh, stay on hold for just a moment because I do want to talk a little bit about uh, this evaluation and improvement study. Um, Mayor Megan Berry had requested this and uh, I'm told this is a collaborative evaluation of the fairgrounds property by Commonwealth Development Group and TSU is involved as well. Their College of Engineering has gotten involved to develop some recommendations for investment and I have here in my notes that the goal is to broaden community use, attract new business and improve access and functionality. Um, so you've got a private group, this Commonwealth Development Group, TSU, coming together. What do you know so far? And again, I know this is a lot. You, no, you, you've been cramming for 30 days right. just about um, this m investment by Metro and, and, and really kind of taking a hard look now because you need to evaluate before we can make decisions for the future, right? Absolutely. We are thrilled that um, Mayor Barry sees that potential in us as well to invest uh, that money and that capital money into the fairgrounds and the mm -hmm. Metro Council, you know, concurred. And so what a great, you know, investment. Um, 
that said, we've got we've got a lot of opportunities as we've kind of talked about earlier with a lot of the infrastructure. Right. What's great about this is that we're looking at our current facility and and investing in that to maximize that use. Sure. And and absolutely, we're looking at not only what we're doing there currently we're going to be super creative think outside the box and and ask ourselves why not why can't we look at potential mm -hmm. um we all agree on the staff and, and i i feel i can speak for the board as well that there there are so many possibilities there and and we're going to tap into that we're going right. to we're going to be creative ourselves we're going to be committed to the the improvements and moving forward mm -hmm. and and I and I I sense the public is too. I think I, right. I sense that the public is ready to to engage with us um, and to assist us in that process. Let's go back to the phones. Jimmy is holding on line one. Hey, Jimmy. Yes, I would like to know something about the state fair. I'd like to know about the contract with it. It seems like is it the same as what it was when a private company had it, or is it less since? The ones that have it just stinks of corruption. It was ex-board members and politicians taking over to make some quick bucks by having a non-profit take over everything. The only one that seems like going to make money is them right. while they help to close the fair down. Did you, uh, fair down. have you been to the state fair? Did you go this year, Jimmy, or have you been in years past? Oh, sure. I used to go a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. We used to like going to the mule poles and stuff. Let's uh, hold right there and, and listen in. You got to be a part of the state fair I this did. year. I did, yeah. I did, and I got to judge a, a grill contest mm -hmm. with FFA and and attend the ham breakfast for FFA. I just a gr I I had a blast. I'm kind of a state fair junkie, and I yeah. love it, and it's really fun. And you know, I, I'm, you know, being that I have literally 22 days under my belt, you know, I can't unfortunately speak to his question about his, you know, yeah. contracts of the past. Right. Um, but that said, you know, it, they just, the t as you stated earlier, the State Fair just celebrated 110 years on that property. Um, it is yeah. a tradition. Yeah. Um, and, you know, whatever we can do, as long as it's on that property to, to help it be successful, I mean, we're happy to do. And I had a blast, and I hope everybody got a chance to, to participate. We had, for the most part, really great weather, and everybody worked really hard. Weather's key. It's, it a, is. it's a rough time of year. It is. It's tough. You for know, all you, the county fairs and then for the state fair. Yeah, you know, you get it. Be tricky. The the one day it rained all day, unfortunately, was on a Saturday, and and that's always tough. But you you budget. You kind of have to plan for maybe not the best weather, but not the worst either. So mm -hmm. you, you you know, and I'm sure that you know they also the uh, state fair association planned for that eventuality yeah. as well. So. Uh, Jimmy, thank you. I uh, got a lot of J's. We got Jay, Jody, Jimmy, and up next is James. But uh, you got to hold on because we got to do another break here. We'll be right back. Open line rolls on on a Tuesday night.